Hello and welcome to Sarpoint Engineering's demo video on road corridor feature extraction featuring our mobile LiDAR data set collected from the VMX 450. In this demo we'll briefly go over a road corridor uh, that was collected with an overpass and a twinned highway. We'll discuss feature extraction uh, of a both bare earth DEM as well as cross-section profiles, uh, the extraction of pavement markings and other line work. We'll also discuss digitization of power pole locations, light standards, guardrails, power lines, signs, and any other assets that are found along a highway corridor. And we'll also briefly discuss evaluation of lines of sights from any given point. I'll simply load up our point cloud and currently you'll see that I've chosen to show the point cloud using a distance from plane so the blue to the white here is low ground and then as we get into our greens and reds it becomes higher ground and then back into the white to show the extreme highs and the extreme lows. To extract a bare earth DEM from our point cloud, it should be noted that the point cloud that is currently visible is thinned to 95% of the original point cloud. The VMX 450 extracts data at a rate of 1.1 million points per second. So the data sets that we receive at the office are quite large. For the sake of this demo and for visualization purposes, I've thinned this data set to, again, 95%, or 1 in every 20 points is currently represented on the screen. You can see that it's still a fairly dense point cloud, but it's still too dense to effectively create a DEM. This is about a point every 5 to 10 centimeters. In order to give a nice DEM, we can place regular gridded spot shots or as we like to do um, for clients irregular shots using an algorithm that will plot only key points within a regular grid so we can specify a regular grid of say one meter spacing and if the plane does not deviate within that one meter spacing from a set tolerance, usually a half a percentage point, the point will not be plotted and it will skip on to the next meter interval. I'll uh, show you an example of that right now. So I'll extract uh, a DEM for this outlined area. And you can see where in this flat portion, although we asked for one meter spacing, it's only plotted every few meters or so. And again, this is because at this point, the plane is very flat. I'll give a cross section so that you can see. So in this flat section, key points are only plotted every few meters. What this does is save data points within this uh, data set and allows for smaller DEM uh, file sizes while still retaining um, the information required to do uh, contouring, etc. So again, you can see where it's very dense along here and then gets thin uh, in along the flat section. And then again, dense as we get back up towards a ramp and require more uh, consistent intervals with our spot shots and you can see where it picks up a regular grid again. This goes for our road collection as well. You can see where we've collected the uh, roadway of the twinned highway here and the overpass that goes over top. Now the difference between the overpass is for the purposes of visualization on the overpass we've connected the spot shots and we've chosen to use a regular gridded interval here but the same principle applies as with the DEM. We could, if we wanted, plot only the key points. So if the road remains flat, uh, 
not as many spot shots would be picked up uh, in order to show the road. So along here, we may have one at the crown, one at both edges of the pavement, and then pick up uh, more regular spacing as the plane deviates away from uh, a flat surface. You can also see that when we uh, collected this uh, particular roadway, uh, we plotted the crown and you can see where the crown begins to uh, deviate from what would be center and this allows for um, modeling and, uh, and allows you to check for things like water drainage etc and have a very good understanding of how the actual crown of the road is occurring. As you can see cross sections um, are very very simple to create. Um, they can be done along a prescribed corridor at regular intervals or they can be done um, for any particular arbitrary point that is required. So in this case the very center of the bridge and you can see the detail that is included with the cross sections. I'll even make that bigger so that we can have a very good view of it. And you can see where you see the road, um, these light standards, and the structure uh, comprising the overpass itself. Um, again, the VMX is collecting data at 1.1 million points per second, so it's very detailed on what it captures. The extraction of pavement markings is done uh, very simply as well as the VMX not only collects laser data from a distancing perspective but as we're traveling we're also collecting reflectancies so if I change my viewing from distance from plane to intensity and if I turn off the lane markings momentarily so that you can see them You can see that in the reflectancies, we have the paint lines are quite visible. And again, coincide with the pictures uh, that we're taking. So we have geoposition cameras that ride along with the unit and give us the imagery that we can then use to verify that the line markings and uh, various things, uh, various objects that we're asked to digitize, that we are digitizing correctly and properly. So again, where our line is coincidental. This is also a good example of how we can verify um, that the power poles and other infrastructure that we're collecting do line up. So you can see here if I turn off the towers momentarily you can see where our power poles line up with what has been digitized and modeled. It should also be noted that we can model in either three dimensions and have a physical object or we can simply place a cell uh, two-dimensionally upon where it, it needs to be and I will do a quick example of that uh, for you right now. Again if I show this distance from plane you can see where the white power pole or uh, light standard stands out quite clearly in amongst its blue because it's white and then placing a cell is as simple
as taking a cell from the cell library and this could be anything um, that's needed uh, whether it's a sign, a manhole, um, an electric meter, gas meter, junction box uh, whatever needs to be digitized uh, can be placed into uh, the file and again it can be um, as with any cell can be rotated to any form that needs to that it needs to be so if it needs to be positioned we're able to rotate it uh, however it however is required if for whatever reason um, the two-dimensional cells um, need to be modeled in 3D they, that can be done as well so if uh, and you can see that these were snapped right to the ground if we wanted to model this in three dimensions that is quite as simple as literally clicking the cell and then extracting it up to the 3D and this is handy for again doing any kind of uh, line of sight uh, evaluations uh, if you need to uh, check on uh, obstructions or anything like that instead of having a two-dimensional cell we can place this in three dimensions and give an idea of, of what the kind of obstruction will be also with the 2D cells because they can be tagged with attributes this is uh, helpful in building uh, GIS databases and can be linked uh, in any way necessary to pull out and extract information. If there are any questions or to see more applications uh, in regards to what can be extracted and pulled from our data sets, feel free to give an email to info at sarpointeng.com and we'll be sure to respond back with any queries and answers that you have. So again, uh, if this has piqued your curiosity and you're wondering if there is something more that can be done with these data sets, uh, or if you'd like to see a live demo, please uh, call into the office or give an email to info at sarpointeng.com. Thanks for viewing.